What's up, Vikings fans? We are back for another position by position breakdown. The one and only Ben Lieber is here, and Ben, it's always to, it's always good to talk ball with you, man. It's always good to talk ball with you, and and finally we get to talk some ball. I mean, it's like there's never a whole lot of uh, of NFL news, but uh, for these position by position breakdowns, it's always fun to kind of get back to business. So it's a uh, it's good to be on with you, man. This position group today, we talk about the cornerbacks, a group that lost Trey Waynes, Alexander McKenzie, Xavier Rose to free agency, and then they reload in the draft with, you know, guys like Jeff Gladney, Cameron Dansler, Harrison Hand. On paper right now, you know, being that this group is so young, on paper right now, it only looks like Mike Hughes is penciled in as a starter at one of the, you know, the cornerback spots simply due to experience, but it's a wide open competition. Well, I think the the logical expe- uh, expectation is that there it's going to be a slow go, you know, the first quarter of the season, uh, especially with no OTAs. We're not going to have any mini camps. We can't get these guys actually on the on the field. Uh, I think the the realistic expectation is this will probably be the proverbial weak link of the defense. This defense is set up to be very strong on the inside uh, with the defensive line. Uh, the linebackers clearly in the two safeties. So the middle of the defense, a lot of experience, a lot of productivity, and not a lot of experience on the outside. And and I think that's uh, that's just that's just the way it is. That's real talk. And so we need to see a lot of these young guys step up. And this is probably the youngest position group on this Vikings roster. The average age of this group is 22 years old. Jeff Gladney is the second oldest player in this position group. He's 23 years old. How do you find veteran leadership in this group? Like, who do you look to for veteran leadership other than, you know, Mike Hughes? Like, how do you address that? Well, the good thing is, unless they've changed things from when I was a player, the, the whole secondary is together. You know, they, when they break down by position for meetings and whatnot, uh, the safeties are going to be with the corners. And, and that's a good thing, right? We, we've got two veteran safeties. We've got a, a veteran group in, that, in that, whole, um, that whole position that when they're in meetings, those veteran guys at the safety group can help out some of these corners. And so they don't have to feel like they're being separated and they go off just to the corner back room and they're just talking corner stuff. Um, they're going to be mixed in with with the overall secondary. And, and I actually imagine that there's going to be, because of that, because of the youth, I think really on the whole team, I think there's going to be a lot of just um, big breakouts. They're not going to go into position by position. I could see, you know, Mike Zimmer and Andre Patterson and Adam Zimmer keeping these guys together in a whole group uh, just so they can teach everything as as Coach Zimmer likes to do. He's he. The defensive line guys have to know what's going on with the corners and vice versa. So I think there's going to be a lot of big group stuff. So hopefully when it comes to true leadership, we're not asking these guys to go above and beyond. They need to concentrate on what they can do on the field and worry about some of the leadership stuff a little bit later on and kind of let the veterans on the on the total defense sort of take over those roles. You you hit on Jeff Gladney uh, earlier. Oh, we all know Mike Zimmer thrives on developing young corners. So how do you envision the growth of a guy like Jeff Gladney, who was, you know, drafted in the first round and we're going to expect uh, a little bit more than a, a little bit more than a little bit from him? Yeah, I, I think that he's in a good situation because of his background and where he came from. You know, I, I think everybody regards Gary Patterson and TCU as a uh, sort of this defensive football factory that, you know, if you're coming out of TCU, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you're going to know football. You're going to understand football. And and with Jeff being a, a guy that, um, like you said, is, is older in age, but older and wiser in experience as well. He played the first, you know, the, well, I should say the last eight games of his freshman year and then essentially never came off the field for the next four. You know, he, he was his four years of experience there. He was playing. He was durable. Uh, he saw anything and everything. Uh, he was a true shutdown corner in the Big 12, which is hard to do because you know, the Big 12 gets ripped on for for being nothing but offense. But having nothing but offense means you've got good receivers that you're facing every single week. And he was a guy that would find the number one receiver. You know, he'd find the, find the CD Lambs, the, the Denzel Mimses of the world, and he'd match up with them the whole game. Right corner, left corner. If they lined up in a slot, he was their shadow the whole time. And, you know, with, with five interceptions and 37 pass breakups, 
he did a hell of a job. So I, I think when you have this environment that we're in, where there's not a lot of practice, um, they're going to have to learn on the fly. I like the fact that Gladney came from a football place, knows a lot of football, has a lot of snaps under his belt. And I don't think this moment and these moments are going to be too big for him. You've been on record speaking highly of Cameron Dantzler since he got drafted. He gave up one touchdown and 568 snaps uh, in the past two seasons at, at Mississippi State. But why do you think he's special? Why is, why is he a guy that you've been really high, really high on since he's been drafted? You know, there's something about his game that I think people um, you want to you want to sort of dismiss. And I don't know if it's his stature because he's kind of long and lanky. Um, you know, he, he doesn't try to carry himself with a ton of swagger. He's just he's just confident. He's not going to be overly flashy. And so I think he can kind of fly under the radar. But then you watch the tape. And I like his short area quickness. Um, I, I like him maybe more in a slot situation than a true corner uh, because he plays with really good vision. He has a good understanding of spatial awareness and, and route recognition. Um, and I think he's tough. You know, he's he's a slender, slim guy, but he's not afraid to come up and hit you. And I, and I think that's an important trait to have, especially if he's going to be in the contention for a slot corner. But. I just like him because he goes about his business, and and uh, it's it's hard to say that sometimes with with cornerbacks because they like to be flashy. And uh, you know, if, if people are paying attention here in the last couple of weeks, he you know his own teammate and Justin Jefferson sort of dogged him on social media about his his <laughs> lack of swagger. But um, I, I I think that I think that's a good thing because he's you need those those business like approach type guys, and I think he's he's just that. Holton Hill Hill is the other cornerback in this position room that's seen some meaningful snaps. How does he make that next step in his career, in his game? How does how does he, you know, build on last year, those 20 tackles he had last year and get more playing time? Well I think I think now just being being available, you know, for him, it's it's, you know, whether it's suspension or injury as a player, you have to be available. And I think just him being available, him taking care of his own business personally and getting on the field I think this guy has a tremendously high ceiling. Um, he has the confidence that you're looking for. I think he has the long speed and the skill set that you're looking for. Uh, he attacks the football. And and I think as long as he gets more opportunities, he's going to capitalize on those opportunities. I mean, that was he was a highly, highly regarded um, talent in the draft. And the only thing that kept him down and kept pushing him down was, was this personal stuff off the field. And, and now that that seems to be taken care of, I think you're going to get a more available Holton Hill, which I think is going to lead to more productivity. We started this conversation off talking about the, the youth of this group. But what's the upside to having such a young group? Well, I think it's just competition. You know, the best thing about the NFL in general is that um, there are well, guaranteed contracts are becoming more and more prevalent. But um, the lack of guarantees and the fact that everybody as a player feels like they're penciled in from week to week. Not penciled in for the season, but you're penciled in from week to week, meaning that you have to compete and you have to earn that spot every single practice. And with this group, they're going to put it out there that we don't care where you're drafted. We don't care that you're Jeff Gladney. We don't care that you're Mike Hughes. Every one of these guys is going to have to go out there and compete. And those guys, it's not just lip service. They also understand that because they see – they see it pretty clearly how the depth chart is laying out. They understand that nobody has proved themselves at the NFL level yet. So, you know, the Chris Boyds of the world, you know, Harrison Hand coming in from, from Temple by way of Baylor, uh, the Baylor Bears, he's going to have an opportunity to go out there and compete. And, uh, and so I think just that level of competition that's going to happen every single day is going to make them all better. Well, this is not just lip service. Ben Lieber, you heard it here first. Appreciate you, Ben. Thank you, Gabe. Good to see you, man. You too.